love adding little details to my sewing. So today I'm gonna to show you a really beautiful detail called a shell tuck hem. It's also known as a scallop hem or a pico hem. It's actually very easy to create and you just use a standard stitch on your sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how to do it. But before we get to that, if you're someone who's interested in making your own clothing with more intention and joy, you're definitely in the right place here at Seamwork. So hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you can follow along with us and never miss one of our weekly videos. All right, so what is a shell tuck hem? So basically what you're doing is you're creating little scallops by stitching on and off the edge of your fabric. And I'll show you how to do this using the Orlando t-shirt today. And you can do this on a knit fabric like we're doing with this Orlando, or you can do it on delicate or sheer fabrics and get a really similar effect. So whether you're using a lightweight woven or you're using a knit, you can try this. So first of all, sew your t-shirt just like you would normally. So again, this is the Orlando t-shirt. We'll put a link to the pattern down below if you wanna try this one out, but it's got this beautiful scoop neck that looks great with this detail. So just sew the pattern like you would normally, and then you're gonna put this shell detail on at the very, very end after you've done your hems and after you've done your binding. And if you do make a mistake on your final garment when you're actually sewing it, don't worry, it's really easy to undo it. You just unpick it with a seam ripper, and you can use some steam to get it right back into shape. So if you make a mistake, not a big deal. Okay, so to do this, you'll wanna use this very overlock stitch. Uh, it looks like a little heartbeat. You've got some straight stitches and then there's a, um, a zigzag stitch in between. So just look for one that looks like a heartbeat. You can also use the blind stitch if you have that on your machine. Um, but if you have this very overlock stitch, look for that. So set the width of your stitch to the widest setting possible. So here we have it set at five and a half and set the length to somewhere between two and three. So we have our set at two and a half. And finally, set your upper thread tension to the highest setting. So we're gonna go from four and we're gonna raise it all the way up to 10. So now we're gonna test this out on some scrap fabric. So take some scraps that are left over from your project and you wanna test the stitch before you do it on your final project. And you're gonna do that so that you can get exactly the right look that you're going for by adjusting things like the tension and the width and the length until it looks exactly the way you want it to look before you sew onto your actual garment. So I folded this scrap in half here. You can see this is um, just one scrap. I folded it in half, so it's the same kind of weight and heaviness as the actual um, binding that I'd use, or if, if you're doing a hem, same thing. You want it to be the same thickness. So if you're doing a hem or if you're doing a binding on a neckline, just fold it in half so it's exactly the same. Okay, so we're using a walking foot for this. Uh, if you have a walking foot, it's a great choice for this stitch. It'll make it a lot easier. But if you don't have a walking foot, that's fine. You can just use a regular straight stitch foot for this as well. So we're going to position the fabric so that the folded edge is right up against the edge of the little window in your foot, just like this. And that way, when the arm swings over here to, to do the, the swing of the stitch, it'll be right on the edge. So I'm going to lower the needle and we'll start stitching. All right, so then you have this beautiful shell tuck hem at the end, and you can see the stitches are very visible because we used a contrast thread, but when you use a matching thread, you're not gonna be able to see the stitches as well. You're just gonna see this beautiful pattern, this shell pattern, the scalloping on the edge. You can play around with the stitch length to get some different looks. So here, I've done one that has a length of two instead of two and a half, so it's a little bit closer together. And here we have a length of three, so it's a little bit further apart, and you can see the shells are a little bit bigger. So depending on what kind of look you want, you can play around with the stitch length on your scrap before you actually put it on your final garment. That's it for us today. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to let us know by hitting the like button. And be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you get all our weekly videos. If you like to add fun details like this to your sewing patterns, it helps to make a plan. We have a free downloadable sewing planner with space to sketch out fun little details like this for your projects. And I'll also put a link to the planner below. And if you like to read articles in addition to watching videos, 
head over to Seamwork.com where we post articles to go with our episodes every single week. And if you'd like to join Seamwork and become part of our private community, plus get access to hundreds of sewing patterns and dozens of sew along classes, YouTube subscribers get a 50% off lifetime discount when you join at Seamwork.com slash go slash YouTube 50. So wherever you choose to join us, I hope you have a great rest of your week. Remember to have fun and be yourself because that's what sewing is all about. 